Joining me now, my jujitsu coach. <laughs> Let's go. Vince Morales in the building. Should have been on the show a while ago. Uh, just because, as you guys can see on the screen, VM are his initials. And uh, yeah, man, I've been looking forward to this, bro. Um, you know, I've never told you this, or I think I haven't told you this, but one of the biggest bets I ever made in my life involved you before no? I even knew you. Really? Yeah. Which one was that? You were an underdog against uh, Smolka. Uh huh. Oh, really? What was that? I thought, oh, I'm always an underdog. No? Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah. And um, yeah, dude. At the time, like, and, and look, when I say the biggest, I'm like a $25, $50, $100 better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to publicly say thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I said, way before I knew you. Um, I'll take my 10% now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. But, uh, bro, I've been looking forward to this, man. And when I said the jujitsu coach in the beginning, um, everyone that knows you and knows me knows, like, front headlock is our shit in jujitsu. And, mm -hmm. Uh, whenever you're giving instructions on something or after a role, you'll be showing something. I'm all eyes and ears with yeah, you, bro. See, everyone, else, like, eye, yeah. everyone else, I'm kind of like, everyone else, I'm kind of like, all right, man, I'll, I'll figure it out. But with you, I'm like, damn, what is he yeah, showing over there? there bro? There's something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, that's just my game, too. I don't know if it's from wrestling or what, but like uh, something about having front headlock just makes sense to me. And, and that, I think I built my whole game around that. Like, I got other submissions and I'm, I'm decent in other spots, too, but it's all supported by that. So that's, that's just where I like to operate. So wrestling is the origin story? Yeah, bro. Um, actually, I didn't even wrestle until high school. And my math teacher, who was like my favorite teacher, he just he was the coach. And one day he's just like, hey, come out for the wrestling team. I'm like, all right. I was, <laughs> dumb. I was a dumb kid, dude. I didn't really know. And uh, <clears throat> didn't know what I was getting into. I thought I could tap. Um, I thought I thought a pin had to be a three count. Like, apparently not, that's all just professional fake wrestling. Um, and then... I went out there and I went 0 and 12 as a freshman. I just could not figure it out. <laughs> I was tough. I just lost a lot. And um, from there, my grades slipped after that. And like I saw as a sophomore, I couldn't even wrestle until halfway through the year. And then wrestled halfway through the year. I almost won, lost again. And I think I had like five matches and I finally got a win. And I was like, wow, that's way different than anything I had experienced in my life. Like, Winning a wrestling match or winning sports in general, like that's a very unique feeling, especially in wrestling when you're solo, you're solo dolo, you're out there by yourself and, and you're kind of exposed to it. You're in that stupid singlet, which I always thought was weird. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's such a high that I was like, okay, this is, there's something here. And I think that win just helped me level up that much more. And by, by the time I was a senior in high school, um, I ended up taking first at the state tournament in Oregon. And that's my... Well, you said origin story. I say Cinderella story. <laughs> 0 and 12 to state champ. But that was a big deal for me. It's like, uh, that's still like, I get goosebumps when I think about it. Hell yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Fuck, dude. There's, there's so much there that I want to break down. Any, mm -hmm. any sports growing up? Uh, I did soccer as a, as like a youth, like 10 year old or something. And okay. then I got scared of Y12, I think is what it was called for the, for everybody who was 12 years old. And I just never went and did it again. But, I was decent at soccer, and I just never did. I, I don't know. I, I wish I would have because I think some more athletics would only help me be better at what I do now. Nah, totally, bro. Like, I was I was a soccer kid growing up, too. I, play, I played everything, mm -hmm. but I grew up primarily playing soccer. And then similar to you, bro, I didn't have a coach tell me this. I had one of my friends that was older than me. And by older, I mean two years. He was the older kid in the neighborhood. Yeah, right. But he was the quarterback before I played. And so he was a senior, I was a sophomore, and he had graduated, and the team was really good. Shout out to Brian High School, the Owls. He he was like, yo, bro, they're going to need a quarterback. They got this one kid, but he's kind of like, he don't take it too seriously. He think his shit don't stink, and he's very full of himself. But, like, you know, coach don't really like him. He don't want him to be the quarterback. You should go. And I'm like, yo, bro, I've never played football, dude. I'm a soccer kid growing up. I weigh like 130. 40 pounds 150 pounds no muscle at all I didn't lift until I was like in college so I didn't even right. lift in high school when I started playing I was like bro I play in the park seven on seven like yeah I'll run to the red car and I'll throw it to you I didn't reckon remember a playbook and shit he's like yo bro I'm telling you it's not that difficult 
he's like, I know how you are. You're very disciplined and like you're really serious about your your business or, or the sports. He's like, yo, go for it. Changed my life, bro. Sick. Yeah. Immediately, I showed up to spring practice and I just fell in love with it. Mm. And from there, I stopped playing soccer. And like, dude, I was really good. I, I made I made state state teams, regional teams. Yeah, I got cut. I was like last thirty for nationals. Damn. For like the U U sixteen team, and like I played a position in soccer that was it was never glamorous. I was the defensive midfielder. Yeah, yeah. So anytime coaches would I, you'd go to these tournaments, everyone's like, "Oh, what do you play? Forward, forward, forward." And then I'll remember the the coach taking down everyone's name. He's like, "What position you play?" I'm like, "Defensive midfield," and he's like really like on your own you want to play this i was like yeah bro he's like holy shit so i was like really good bro nice and uh i just fell in love with football and one of the questions that i always ask people to tie into what i'm telling you now a little bit of like my background with athletics what's your biggest regret in your life man i'm not big on regrets i i know i know but yeah I, I don't want to hear that. That I wish I could have or I wish I would No, nah, like everyone has a regret, bro. It could be in, it could be a minor thing. It could be a major thing. And I'll give you, to add context, I always tell people when I ask them this question because I give them a minute to think about it. My regret, if I had to pick something, would be quitting soccer when I did. Mm. However, to play devil's advocate to that, my love for football gave me everything I got now. Mm. Like I wouldn't know you right, right. or train jujitsu or move to Vegas if it wasn't for my love for football. So, like, is it a regret, bro? Maybe I blow out a knee at 19 and, like, my shit is fried and then I never fall in love with football. So, entirely different. yeah, a whole different mm -hmm. career path and life path. That's what I mean by regret. Right. So, like, if you had to pick something that was a regret of yours, what would you say? It's so lame, dude, because the only thing that I, that I really would like more of of my – younger life that i think would and still it's to benefit now dude as i wish i would have wrestled sooner because if i'd have wrestled sooner i think just with the way i learn and, and the way i apply myself and how competitive i am i think uh it would i'd probably be undefeated right now or something like that'd be great but that's still that that's only thinking of, of now um i really i wish i would have wrestled sooner but I can't, I can't even think about that because uh like there is i, I can't do anything about that I got to focus on now. So anytime I run across like regrets or, or anything from my past that I wish could have went differently or anything, I immediately shut that shit down because the most important thing for me now is now. And that's all, that's all I focus on. So literally it's, it's hard for me to track down real regrets. Damn. That's a hell of an answer and a, and a dope ass perspective, bro. Cause I like trying to pick people's brain and understand as best I can. Cause I, I'll, I'll never be in your shoes. You'll never be in my shoes, but I always try to especially people that I'm cool with and I have a relationship with, I try to figure out like, yo, why do they think that way? Right. Why are they that way? Mm -hmm. And and I like hearing that because my, my biggest problem was always like down the road. Like yeah. I never, I never sat back to appreciate like this shit I got now, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes I'll have these conversations with my friends back home. Like recently, actually one of my boys hit me up and, and uh, cause I posted this video of Mace and I just watching these like TikToks, and we just so happen to have the cameras rolling. And I posted it and my friend was like, yo, bro, think about your life right now, dude. Like uh -huh. started doing a podcast in your friend's basement, then your mom's basement. Now you're fucking showing memes and reels to Mace in the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. like I'm I'm so focused. You're focused on the now. I'm yeah, focused yeah. on like I have yeah. this number in my head of the amount of money I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, I got to get there. Right. So I don't appreciate the now. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool perspective that you have where you're like, yo, the now. I think you kind of got to do both a little bit, dude. I think when, when I, I've caught myself, like my first run in the UFC, I really caught myself uh, focusing on, okay, uh, when I win and when I do this, when I do this, like the next step is this, next step is this, yada, yada. Like, bro, I was in the biggest fight organization of the world. Like, I, I didn't stop to smell the roses quite enough, I don't think, and, and really take it in for what the moments were. And um, I think it it played on my mental aspect of my performances. And I think it, it affected me a little bit. So that's one thing I've learned being out of it, out of the show. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I can't take that shit for granted because you don't know when the stuff that you're really, that you're halfway enjoying now, you could be fully enjoying it. And that's where it can really make a difference. Bro. You know, what my favorite thing about you is outside of Darcy and Anacondas. Cause <laughs> me and you, uh, I always send you the Spider-Man meme where like they're pointing at each other. Yeah, yeah. I like that you got to the UFC then you got released and you went back. 
Because mm. a lot of people, like, I can't fuck with people, bro, that, like, bitch and moan and sulk and, like, yeah. why me? Like, oh, unfortunate me. It's hard know? for me, too. Bro, mm. I can't, bro. I don't want to be around that. Like, shit's going to happen. Bad shit's going to happen. Not every day is perfect. Right. You're going to go through whack shit. And to be able to get released by the UFC, you go on this win streak, now you're back. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty dope, bro. And for real, that's my favorite thing about you, Yeah, man. thanks, bro. I'm, I'm kind of just a stubborn bastard. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, uh, I think a lot of people would get... I had a weird thing where instead of getting discouraged from getting cut, I got way more confident. That was a whole bunch of experience because I knew I was still going to keep fighting. Like, that's the most important thing of what I do. And, uh, yeah, I just doubled down on it. I was like, you know what? I, I can't really focus on not making mistakes or what this is going to do for me that's all byproduct stuff that's going to come uh i got to focus on trying to be the best version of me and really go out there and enjoy and win the, like if i enjoy the fights i win the fights like nine times out of ten so i just got to get out there and be me and enjoy this shit. how different is it getting ready for a fight in the ufc as opposed to a regional fight or you know a big promotion that's not the ufc like obviously that's the alpha that's the main event and you know, you go from that. What's what's like the thought process, or is it the same? Some of it's the same. Some of it's a little bit different. I think. All right, so give me something that's the same. Right. Uh, I'm still focused on me. I still got my team there with me. Um, I'm still gonna go out there and fight. Like that. That's all. That's all shit that you're gonna see at the lowest level to the highest level. Um, one the biggest thing that's probably different. There's something about the UFC. And they, I guess they. I think they call it the lights, but I think they attribute it more than just physically the lights. Um. You're fighting the other, the best guys in the world. And I think something about that can really, it can sit with people differently. Um, it sits with me differently now than it did my first run. Um, I think it boxed me in a little bit in my first run. Just, and that's, that's the main thing that I noticed different. Um, I got cut and then I went and fought like over in Ryzen. I fought one of their best guys. Um, he had 40 something fights, which is more than double my fights. Uh, and I knew he was an experienced guy, but for whatever reason, it, it didn't hit the same. It, as as when I was in the UFC fighting the experienced guys and I was the underexperienced underdog, know what I mean? Um, and then being back, that's the one thing I know. Okay, this is something about the the lights feels like the big show, and I think that adds a little bit of uh, pressure to people, right? So something something about the UFC, you can feel it in the atmosphere. I don't know if it's because it's the well oiled machine that it is, and everybody's backstage running their shit, and everything's getting done how it should be on the dot. Like they know what time you're walking out, like everything. Um, other shows are a little more, there's a little more or, organicness, I guess. I don't know if that's a word, but it kind of, there's a different flow to it thing. Okay. I guess we're walking now instead of in 20, like now we're, we're on the dime in the UFC. It just seems all those little things make it seem much more serious. All right. So if you take it down that serious route, it can almost like a, it can add some pressure. It, it has added pressure to me before. Yeah. It's serious. I, yeah. Everything runs now, but like, yeah, fucking, I'm with it now. Like, know what I mean? I, I don't, I, for me, I try not to let those lights fucking blind me now. Damn, bro. That's really interesting, man. Mm. Like pr perspective too. Perspective is big for me and mm. just trying to understand it. What do you mean by you, you felt boxed in on your first run as opposed to this second run that you're on now? Um, that first run, and I noticed it during the run. And I, for whatever reason, I couldn't, I couldn't change the way my mind was thinking about some of those things. But uh, I was trying really hard not to make mistakes and just do the right thing and by not making a mistake. So if I get hit in a fight, technically uh, that's a mistake. If that's how you're looking at it. And that's one of the ways I was looking at it. So I'm out there trying like too much not to get hit, which wasn't allowing me to build on my best attribute, which is like volume and pressure and, and power. You know, now I'm sitting back trying to like find some counter punches and find these little sweet spots where that's not where my magic happens. You know what I mean? So I think I, I was just held up in that, like, don't make a mistake fight to win sort of box where it held me back. Didn't let me be free. Didn't let, didn't let Vince Morales do Vince Morales. So that was another thing I took out. I took when I was out of the show, I was like, I got to get back to me, dude, especially now I'm making pennies compared to what I was making in the UFC. Do you really love it or not? Is it going to be worth it or not? Don't know. Better get out there and enjoy the shit and let's, let's see what we can do. Bro. I'm glad that you brought that up. Cause I think I saw one of your tweets. Um, prior was it prior to this ufc fight I don't that you got called back it was something about like how much money you had in your bank account oh that was uh 
dude, that was right before the UFL fight. The UFL uh, paid paid me pretty well. That was cool. We we ended up winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bonus for two shout days. out to you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Shout out Vinchuvian. Vinchuvian. Still, still trying to coin yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, but prior to that, I think my bank account before the per diem hit my account, I think I was like negative 200 bucks or something like that. I'm like, ah, but that happens because, uh, at, as you go into a fight, like your medicals are a little more expensive. I had to take less clients because of my, my fights coming up and that's important. So I got to focus on that. Right. And, and bills of course are always there. for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, it's an enemy we can never beat yet. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, I just work, work myself into a little hole and knowing that like future events was going to take care of it. Cause I had to focus on now. And that was like, Unfortunately, focusing on the now at that point was digging me into a little bit of a hole, but it worked out, worked out nicely. No, nah, for sure, man. And and I hope you don't think I'm counting your pockets because that's something that I don't do. But it's just, it's <laughs> wild. About it. it's, it's, it's wild to me, bro, because like it, it's always crazy. Like there's such a big debate about like fighter pay and, and all that stuff. And that, that could be its own episode, you, like a podcast series you could yeah, dedicate no, to that shit. Mm -hmm. But to me, it always don't sit right with me. When you're a professional fighter in the biggest league or the, the, the biggest fight promotion, you got dudes working Ubers, yeah, yeah. still at Whole Foods. Like the fact that you got to have another job yeah. is wild. And I get it. You're not as, you know, maybe you fight two times a year. Some people fight once a year. So I, I understand that too. But bro, I've said this so many times and anyone that listens to the show knows that it, it's, I would say this even before I started training, before I knew any fighters, mm -hmm. I was like, you motherfuckers are the athletes I respect the most, bro, because your first couple of fights as a pro, how much were you getting paid, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, two and two, 200 and 200. <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, so I spent more money to get in that fight than I did, than I made in the fight. Bro, you gotta love that shit if that's the case, man. Like, that's crazy. You literally put your life on the line. People want you to get flatlined or flatline someone, mm -hmm. right? That's when you get the big reaction. And to me, it's always crazy. Like, I'd be seeing some people fighting. I'm like, yo, you really got to love this shit to do that because 100%. I think y'all are crazy. Oh, yeah, we are, dude, a little bit. And that's why, like, going back to fight or pay, in the UFC, dude, we they are paying us more than any of the other shows. So the UFC is, unfortunately, they're the biggest one, so they're catching all the flack. It's kind of, as a as a whole, some of that pay isn't where it could be, not where it needs to be. I think for some of us, it kind of does need to be there. We're getting in the big show now at, like, you see these guys coming off contender series that are like six fights in, bro. That's that's not even really experience. And like, hopefully you're really good naturally because there's a in the UFC it's hard to grow there. Like everybody's mm. very good. Back to that thing I was saying about not making mistakes. The reason you can't make mistakes in we think we can't make mistakes in the fight is uh it co it can cost you the fight like literally. And it's hard to learn and progress when you're trying so hard not to make a mistake because you don't do things. So like, anyways, back to the, the fighter pay point, uh, these guys are in there at a point in their professional career where ha I didn't even know if you've really paid your dues yet. I've, I've been there. I was in it like under 10 fights and we get that first check and it's a decent chunk of change for the most part. Um, and then stuff goes to coaches, stuff goes to manager. We're left with like half of it, taxes, a little less than half, yada, yada, um, with that being said, it's easy to burn through six grand when you've never had six grand in your bank account. Like, so yeah, we do got to work another job because all of a sudden I spent my first fight in the UFC, my first check. Uh, I spent that in the first two weeks. It's gone already. So yeah, I do need to do another job. So if there was a course on like a financial responsibility for some of us dumb fighters, when we first get in, that could help us too. We could maybe reinvest in ourselves and grow the brand properly and, and get, get, a, get our image out there the way it should be easier said than done there's a whole lot of aspects to it know what i mean like like uh i i'm sure john jones isn't saying he's getting paid unfairly right i mean so it's like it's layered it's layered so i don't know i feel bad when uh everybody's like oh you guys are getting underpaid yeah maybe sometimes but we're getting paid here way better than anywhere else by far and we get access to like the pi and they feed us and we get physical therapy strength and conditioning a lot of that stuff's checked off our monthly bills now which is huge yeah nah totally man yeah for sure and like bro you know you know what's crazy like i always talk about this with uh, a lot of professional athletes you'll see these guys get these like million dollar mm -hmm. either signing bonuses or whatnot and they'll be you know anywhere from 18 to 23 years old and they'll go and they'll piss away their money and then you got everybody like criticizing them like oh look at all the dumb yeah. shit you did like bro 
I the last like 18 months I started making good money and I'm still doing dumb shit. Like Bro. I buy sneakers every other week. I buy new clothes all the mm -hmm. time. Like my and and look, I, I went to school, I dropped out of college because I fell in love with creating content. And like, you know, my parents were very like blue collar. You know, my mom's a teacher. My dad got the coffee truck in the city. Mm -hmm. So like nine to five sort of stuff. nine, nine to five. Yeah. Real entrepreneurship. My dad, especially mm -hmm. if, if you don't work, you don't eat. Right. So like you could take a month off if you want, mm -hmm. but yeah, none's going to get handled. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So like for me, I always say this. I'm like, yo, bro, I'll be 34 in March. Mm -hmm. If I got a million dollar check, I'm a hundred percent gonna do something stupid with it because I've never had that kind of money, bro. So like, it's you're you're te you telling that story that you get that first check, and it's what was five six thousand whatever it is when it finally clears out. You're like, yo, bro, this is crazy. So maybe you do spend it on something stupid, or or even if you don't, it's like, damn, you realize that even though it's a lot coming in. Mm -hmm. It's really not a lot. It's really not. And and I think that's why some of us say, some of the fighters say like, well, we don't get paid enough. Well, maybe you don't spend your money right. Dude, because uh, like, I don't know. I don't want to criticize anybody on their habits that I don't know. But uh, I've definitely been on the wrong side of uh, of getting a, a decent amount of change and spending it poorly. So, so what, are you, what are you doing to better yourself post-fighting? It's a fascinating conversation I always like to have with athletes and fighters in particular. Because, you know, two-part question. How much longer do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. And then what are you doing now to set yourself up to not be one of these horror stories that you hear about, you know, this guy was a either pro fighter or a pro football player, and now they're like, uh, you know, security guards or crosswalkers. You know what I mean? Like, you hear these stories. So, like, what are you doing? What was the first part of the question? How much longer do you want to do okay, this? Okay, so that one. Uh Till the wheels fall off, dog. Like I like until I, until I really feel like I, I can't compete with these guys, then, then maybe. But I'd like in in my mind, I like I'm 34 today. I feel like. By the way, happy birthday! Oh, cheers, bro. Thank you. And yeah, yeah. uh, to pull the curtain back, we we scheduled this show, and then I saw everybody posting your birthday today, and I was like, damn, bro, I got this guy coming out on his birthday. I, what you asked me what worked, and I scheduled it. So like, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, I completely fair. forgot. I was like, oh, that's it's my birthday. But fair no, no, enough. No, no, no. I was like, uh, uh <laughs> it, it's weekday, so I work, dude. I'm I've been busy like all day, and my face is all busted up because I've been training all day, and then just gotten done training other people. Now I'm here. Like this is how I like to spend my days. I go, go, go until I till I can't go really. I feel that. Um, I respect that. And then, uh, so yeah, t till I think realistically. Somewhere in my 40s, I could still see see me competing and in, in doing this. Um, I feel, yeah, 34, but man, I feel, I feel like 27. I so I keep telling people like, yeah, I'm turning 28. Like, <laughs> like I I feel young in the sport. I feel like there's still a lot I can learn and grow from. I feel like physically, I still perform properly. So, man, I just keep keep doing it and just keep trusting the process. Um, I I love what I do. As far as what I do, on the outside of that, um, set myself up for the future still the hard part because like if we don't focus so much if we don't focus all of our attention on on us now and getting better now so that we can get the right eyes on us so that we can make the right amount of money that sure we can invest properly and and do all that stuff then we're doing ourselves a little bit of a disservice i try to juggle everything that's one reason i stay so busy um i have i have an app right now that, that i'm running it's called react workouts uh that one's like a think of that like a like a a visual a uh, virtual coach Right? It'll coach you through like a bag work session. It'll, it'll spit, out, spit out combos. You can customize them all, all the different ways you want. Um, if you're just shadow boxing, it'll give you some maybe defensive actions. Like I lost fight to being a, being unable to check kicks. So that was the first that was the first thing that I put on this app was check. So every time that it says check, I'm in the middle of shadow boxing. I'm popping off that check. Mm. Anyways, that's one thing I'm doing to make a little extra cash. Um, I also train people in my in my free time, and I plan to be. I plan to be a coach. So I essentially, my cousin Ricky always says this. We got like a PhD in, in punching people in the face. I'm in the UFC now. That'll look good on the resume as far as sure, being yeah. a coach somewhere. So I think coaching's in my future. Um, no matter what, I'm going to be involved with fighting in one way or another. This is, it's, I say this a lot too. Other than, other than Chino, this is like the only thing I really love. So Hell yeah, man. I'll be yeah. fighting somehow. Nah, for sure. Shout out to Shino, the plus one. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the worst ass whoopings I ever took. From Shino? Was, yeah, in the gi. She's brutal, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah real nice. You know what's crazy, man? Uh, a lot of the girls at our gym, and shout out to all the girls at our gym, 
they're a case study for me. Like my friends back home or, or guys that I know that'll be like, Oh, you know, I'll come and do jujitsu. I'll be all right. I'm like, oh, we'll throw, we'll throw the girls at you. Yeah, Have yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they look all cute and oh, innocent. They like, yeah, good. I don't understand yeah. it until they get in there. Yeah, yeah go in there. Uh -huh. She knows like 120 pounds soaking wet and like fucking, yeah, good. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking put you in a oh, bow and I arrow. And arm, dude. I've rolled with her a few times and she's arm barred me so bad. I can use my arm for a couple weeks. And like, well, she's hyper mobile. So she can like, she can bend her arm to like 210 as far as degrees. I can't make it to 180. So like. She was just expecting more give. I had no give, dog. <laughs> My arm, it's still not the same, probably. She's Yo, brutal, dude. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Jiu-jitsu is crazy, bro. What, um, when did you, so from wrestling, right? I want to go back just a yeah. little bit because I feel like I skipped a really important part. So wrestling in high school, do you go and wrestle in college? I tried to. So I went to Boise State for one semester, um, and they had a really good wrestling team at the time. Uh, like top five in the nation or something like that. And I, I was planning on redshirting there for the first year. Um, I had already talked to my high school coach and talked to the coach there. And, and yeah, we were, so we were planning that. And um, I, just, I had some family stuff go on and, and I was getting charged out of state tuition, even though Boise, Idaho is like right next door to Ontario, Oregon, where mm -hmm. I'm from. It's like 45 minutes away and you got charged out of state tuition still. And, bro it was just too expensive it put it put us in a hole and i was like bro i can't keep doing this to all of us like i had to had to drop out and get get to working from there how how quickly do you start fighting i think i think i screwed around for like let's see i think i was like 19 almost 20 or something like that when i when i dropped out of Boise state um like four years or so i was just kind of working just messing around just trying to make a little cash like i'm from a real small town with like ten thousand people so there's not a lot like we don't really know the realms of possibility of like hard work and where that can get you and, sure. and all that like we just know work hard where we're at that's for the most part um and just the whole time i was working i just something i felt like something was missing and i knew of a i knew of a of a coach there in town that was doing mma and finally after like four years i was like bro i got like i need to compete like i'm gonna lose lose my myself really uh like i think wrestling saved my life prior to that and and i think i had done a lot of growing and i think everybody should wrestle at one point just because i think it's you learn a lot about yourself in wrestling and and yeah like I, I missed something from wrestling and stumbled into the mma room found the coach i was like bro like let me train i want to i want to fight and he's like all right cool i came trained for like a month and a half took an amateur fight up at like 155 and before I even really trained jujitsu, I arm barred some dude and I was like, bro, I got this. I'm like, this is easy. Like, and, uh, and then I just, I just kept continuing that. And I was, I was always working and then going and training, work, train, work, train, work, train for, for years, dude, for years. I kind of still do that in my own side. I'm just working for myself now, which is way better. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer and I rather work for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and even like when I was working for my dad, I was working for my pops, waking up at 2.30 in the morning, going into the city at 4 a.m., flipping eggs, making coffees, coming home, shower, nap, then go and lift. I got up to like 250 pounds at one oh, point. big boy. I was big, bro. I was 2XL. Yeah, I was eating two, three plates of food every fucking time. <laughs> and uh, now I'm at like 190, 195. I kind of sit in that range there. But... I would do that, and then I would drive four four days a week back into Queens. So I grew up in Queens, but my parents live in Long Island, so it's about like a 40-minute commute. Mm -hmm. If you hit traffic at the times that I would always hit traffic because it'd be like rush hour, be like an hour and a half commute oh, just to go and oh, film the hurts, podcast. Bro, bro mm -hmm. the worst, dude, the worst. And then I would come home, rinse and repeat. I'd do that four days a week for like six years, bro. I was doing like the same thing. So I lived in uh, Nampa, Idaho, which is like, it's right around Boise. It's about 45 minutes away from Ontario, from my hometown, Ontario. So I lived in Nampa, drove to Ontario for work, which is 45 minutes in the morning, and then drove to Eagle, which was like an hour 15 away. To train? Yeah, to train, and then drove back to Nampa, which was another Jesus 45 minutes. Christ. That was uh, You're spending like four hours days. a day in a car. Bro, losing my mind. Yeah. Uh, podcasts were great back then. Was, yeah. Was, that was like when I was first starting to really listen to them. And then, uh, yeah, podcast music made, it, made the drive much better, and I just... Man, I just wanted to train. So like, but I get it. That's part of the grind. Like that, that's what it is. Are you, uh, uh, how bad do you want it? Sort of. Know what I mean? Not for sure, man. And and like my uh, my high school football coach used to say, "What do you want, and what are we giving up for it?" Because mm. like you can't have it all, bro. Yeah. You can't do all that and party. But I want it all. And yeah, nah, for sure, <laughs> yeah. man. But like you know, now now it's a lot yeah, easier because yeah. like once you do fall into that rhythm where 
you know, like, bro, I was, I was having this conversation recently. I was like, I'm not editing for free anymore. Mm -hmm. I did yeah, that. I that. did that. Uh, yeah. Like I'll edit my shit for free, obviously, cause it's still mine, but I am monetizing the content, which is dope. But bro, for like seven, it wasn't until I moved to Vegas that I was starting to make money off the podcast. Mind you, I've been doing this since 2015. I moved to Vegas in 2022. Damn, son. So, like, uh -huh. I hear all these these people that are like, yo, I just started a podcast. I'm like, yo, go ahead. If you need any information, you need any free game, I'm more than welcome to give it to you. Immediately, like, three months into it, they're like, yo, I haven't made no money. I'm like, you're done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're yeah. done. If you're yeah. doing this for that, uh -huh. like, the uh -huh. love of the game, how I said before about you got to be a sick fuck right. and you got to love this shit mm -hmm. to be a fighter and put your body on the line, your life on the line. Mm -hmm. Obviously, on a way lesser scale, I'm not getting punched yeah. in the face, but like, bro, you got to put in the reps, you got to put yeah. in the time. But regardless, like, you fight for anything you want. I draw a lot of parallels in like everyday life and fighting. Like, fighting is like life condensed. Like, it's sure, like, especially for a fight week. You know what I mean? That's what I always say. Like, in a fight week, we experience like two years worth of emotions in a week. We just go through so many ups and downs and, uh, thankfully, after 20 something fights, it's a lot smoother. But yeah, uh, anything in life, bro. Um, it's it's all about the fight. It's not going to be may not be worth it at first. How, it, how bad you want it, dude? Like that's what it's all about. It's it, it's sick. I I can respect that. That that sounds exactly like like what I tell people all the time. That's sick. Yeah, bro. Like it, it's just something that you know. It's hard for people to understand, and I think one of the cool things about martial arts and especially like jujitsu is I'm also someone that's very persistent, mm -hmm. and as long as I'm having fun doing it. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. That's always been my rule. Like, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's p the podcast, any form of content, the moment I'm not having fun, I'm out, bro. Mm -hmm. And, like, to me, that's always my number one rule with everything. And, you know, a lot of people, they just, they, they don't get it. They, they seem to want a quick instant yeah. gratification. I think social media plays into that, too. And, you know, I get a lot of questions sometimes with, uh, I work with Cameron and Mace. Mm -hmm. fucking big time rappers from new york and like you know they've been famous for almost 30 years but some people are like yo they just started their podcast and they're blowing up it's like yeah but they have 30 years yeah, yeah, yeah. of a fan base uh -huh. Uh -huh. like no shit you know everyone always looks at joe rogan who's like the goat when it mm -hmm. comes to that field this guy's been a comedian and in front of camera since like mm -hmm. the early 90s yeah yeah but people see now he's getting 200 plus million mm -hmm. for fucking a podcast. And they're like, oh, it's easy to do. It's like, no, this guy has, there's a 30 year. Yeah. Like, think about it, bro. He's put like 25 years into that craft in order for him to now the last six, seven years, it make really this like benefits, right? astounding amount of money. Mm -hmm. And like, people don't get that, bro. Like, it's always, it, it's kind of similar to fighting too, right? Like you can't just, your first fight's not going to just be in the UFC right away. No, no, unless no, you're no. like CM Punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you get that. Look how that works out though. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? right? It's a little reality check for everybody watching. For sure, man, for sure. Let me ask you this before, because I, I do want to talk a little bit about the pay-per-view um, mm -hmm. this weekend. Do you, when you do these interviews, and I'm not just saying it because because I train, but like, mm -hmm. do fighters respect people that cover the sport that don't train? It depends, dude. Um, I was I was trying to find an easy way to like sum that up, but uh, sometimes the people who don't train it don't necessarily know how to come about it in in a respectful manner. Does that make sense? Because totally because they can't relate to anything remotely close to the experience and the feelings that go into it right and uh sometimes they do sometimes they're great sometimes they're like please tell me more about it like because uh uh i want to understand so bad and and they ask the right questions um unfortunately I, th I think some of it i don't know if it's like an ego thing or what or, or we have a hard time dealing with uh um our own perception of what's going on i don't know i, I don't know so, like sometimes i get you can tell when somebody doesn't know and they think they know. And that's the worst. That's the worst. But bro, that's the worst in anything. Oh, oh it in, kills in me. Anything, dude. bro. Yeah. I just had this rant. I posted it yesterday. Like I recently had this conversation with a friend of mine. And I mean, for years, he's been asking me about podcasts and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I told him everything he would need to do. And then he has a conversation with you, for example, mm -hmm. and you tell him verbatim what I've told him all these years. And he comes back to me and he's like, bro, Vince told me to do A, B, C, and D. 
I get insulted. I'm like, am, am I fucking dumb as shit that like yeah. I'm I'm telling you this stuff? You're ignoring it, and this is my field. This is my craft. Vince tells you it, and maybe Vince is in that field too. Right, but right. like, what am I? Am I chopped liver? Yeah, am yeah. I just an idiot? Uh -huh. And I can relate to that to what you're saying too. Like that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to train too, bro. Because like I I got into the UFC because I went to spring break in 2010. In, uh, in Cancun and one of my buddies George was like yo bro whatever we do I gotta watch this event mm -hmm. I'm like what he's like yo UFC my favorite fighter George St. Pierre is oh. fighting he was fighting Dan Hardy yeah boy and you know there's eight of us right mm -hmm. we're fucking 18 19 20 years old like my friends are like yo bro we're trying to get some bitches I'm not trying yeah, to go yeah, watch yeah. these fights right uh -huh. I knew rest I, I I'm a lifelong like WWE fan pro wrestling Right. So I knew about Ken Shamrock. So I was like, oh, UFC? Like, all right, cool. I was like, bro, I'm not going to let you go into Mexico by yourself and watch these fights. I was like, I'll come with you. And, bro, he came out in the gi with the fucking ninja outfit yeah, yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I was Sick. like, yo, what is that? The Sick. place I was yeah, at yeah, went yeah. crazy, you know, affliction and uh -huh. tap out uh -huh. and all that. But I just fell in love with UFC. Right. And then from there, I was just like, yo, bro, I feel like a fraud if I don't at least train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit of self-awareness for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big self-awareness yeah, 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 guy, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, if you don't have self-awareness, I'm like, yo, stay away from me. Yeah, right. So I, I started training. And, and, like, look, I never played professional football, but I kicked in college. I was a high school quarterback. I always tell, like, a lot of athletes that I'll have conversations with, they'll be like, oh, you know, do you feel like you're allowed to talk about the sport? I'm like, well, you guys talk about betting on every segment yeah. now, and y'all just got introduced to that. So, like... What gives you the right to talk right, about right. that? I was like, listen, man, if given the opportunity and you can, by all means, you know, I'm not salty towards anyone. Like, if, if you could cash in and you could do your thing, cool. But I think with fighting is way different because you said something before we started yeah. recording that like y'all are pretty sensitive dude, too. Well, most of us fighters, dude, we're super sensitive. We're, yeah. We spend a long, we spend a lot, a lot of time like. Uh, I'm not very sensitive, but like I, I well, I'm kind of sensitive. But uh, uh, we spend a lot of time like working on our craft. So when somebody, especially somebody who uh, doesn't know the sport or know couldn't make it through one class like because you know how hard some of those classes yeah, are. Like, yeah, yeah. some people some, some of these people couldn't even make it through but they have they have the uh audacity the audacity bro <laughs> yeah to, to say something to me about like uh um why didn't you do this or you should do this mm. <sighs> all right all right all right I got, I got to calm down immediately but like uh yeah bro we're we're, we're super sensitive about um you know you listen to tech nine to who? Tech Nine, the rapper. Yeah, of course. So you know that song, Fragile. Yeah. Cool. So I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Yeah. I feel that, dog. I'm a martial artist. For real, I'm yeah. Sensitive yeah. about my shit sometimes. Totally, but, man. Uh, but how do people know what they don't know? Know what I mean? So like at the same time, I don't want to like chastise them and and hang them out like noose them or anything just because they they have a comment about something they don't understand. Yeah. But like uh, a small part of me does. Like. <laughs> nah, I feel you, bro. And and uh, the one thing I like to say is you know. So sometimes people will like do some whack shit to you and be like, Oh, you know, it's not personal. Yeah. Well, when it comes to my business, it is personal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, you know, when I have a guest cancel on me last minute mm. and especially if they're a friend of mine, they're like, yo bro, no, no, I'm personal. I'm like, no, no, that is like, yeah, you're right. a dick. I want you to know you're a dick. Yeah. Don't do that. This is my business. It is personal to me. So how uh, you said about like the fragile and you're an artist. Like, yo, I get it, bro. I get it. You know what's funny, man? Well, I'll, I'll never forget this. Uh, my buddy Nick, we call him boss because growing up, there was four Nick D's in Jeez. our friend group. So everyone had like a nickname. Everyone yeah. back home calls me lamb because I'm Greek. So for Greek Easter, okay, okay, okay. you eat uh, like the rotisserie lamb. So if anyone on Instagram ever wondered why lamb is on there, now you know. Yeah, I wonder for a long time. <laughs> yeah, so that's no one out here calls me that. But like back home, it's even my parents do too. But Crazy. Um, I say all that because me and my friend Nick, like I said, we call him boss. He used to be on the show way back in the day. Bro, we're like 12 beers in. We're watching this UFC pay-per-view one day. Mm. And we're at the bar. And this guy is just like, oh, come on, bro. Like, he can't get up. He can't get up. And I just turned to my friend. I've never trained now, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, self-awareness. Uh -huh. I just turned to him. I go, that shit got to be hard to get up, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, there's, yeah. there's no way. These guys are pro fighters. Uh -huh. Obviously, if he could just get up, uh -huh. right? It's the running meme on, like, social media. Like, yeah, yo, just yeah. stand up, uh -huh. right? And he's like, yeah, bro. It got to be nuts, right? Uh -huh. And then... I slowly started training and bro, the first jujitsu class I ever took, like my coach Sergio, he had me lay down and he got inside control. He's like, yo, try to stand you know, up. Yeah, Couldn't. yeah. Dude. He was a 135er. He felt 300 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? It's wild, bro. And from there, I was just like, oh, okay, I get it now. I never booed. I'm not, I'm not someone that's going to boo a fighter ever. Um, 
like I said, you're putting your life on the line. I, I understand it. I've never gotten into I've never had a fight. But, like, I did spar my coach one time when I was back home. We did a five-minute round. That's the most tired I've ever been in my life. It's different, isn't it? All he did was walk me down the whole time. Yeah, and then I sat down. Your anxiety levels, like. Yeah. yeah and, bro, yeah. I sat down. He's like, all right, let's go. I was like, break. He's like, nah, the minute's up. Yeah, yeah, He's like, yeah. yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can't do this, bro. I love it. It's dude, crazy. It's yeah, best. but, it's dude, like, best. you know, it's you said something about before about how you feel like everyone should wrestle. Mm -hmm. I think everyone should do bag work yeah, yeah. have a mm -hmm. sparring session mm -hmm. one jujitsu class mm -hmm. we get you on neon belly bro it's yeah. not even my game let me just Dude, do that, that stuff goes a long way you figure out a lot about yourself yeah you, you really do like and uh and then the benefit of doing that and then learning something to counteract that that feeling of helplessness or, what, or whatever you want to call it dude that's power you know what i mean that's like oh i got goosebumps that's like uh that that's confidence and and all of a sudden you learn a little bit of that and you start to carry that. You start to see people walk different. Like I, I train people who've never trained before and they want to learn like a little bit of self-defense or something. And, uh, I, I, for the most part, I tr train them like I would train a fighter mm. and, uh, and you can see like after a month or so, like they're starting to walk a little different. They're starting to talk a little different. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, I, I like that about you. Like it, it's a, there's this awesome path of growth that it puts you down. Nah, I love it, bro. Because I went back to New York I go back to New York like maybe two times a year and I went to this wedding and it was all my friends were there. So we were all drinking and shit. And uh, my one buddy does Muay Thai and he goes, yo, how many people can you take at the wedding? I was like, bro, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo, no, con I was like, even you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I get my hands on you, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, yo, the way you say it with so much conviction, he's like, I believe it. Yeah, yeah, right. I was right. like, yeah, bro, like, yo, you, it's, it's crazy, man, unless you do it. Cause I used to be that guy, mm -hmm. you're right? Like, I had the self-awareness that, all right, that shit got to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but I can in, do it. Or but until you yeah, yeah. do, and you understand, bro, yeah, and, yeah. and I tell people, like, yo, listen, I've been training for about five years now. What I could do to you, uh, you having never trained, there's dudes that do that to me, and I've trained. Right, right, right. So, right. I just think about that shit, right? Uh -huh. Like, uh -huh. it's, it's just it's a crazy a, world, bro. It's impossible bro. To, for people to wrap their head around. It's like, a, it's like trying to talk quantum physics to them. Or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, no, like it's they almost reject it. Like, no, yeah, no, they, they, no. yeah, they don't, they don't, under, they don't get it. They don't get it. And it, it's cool because a lot of the audience has started tra like training either jujitsu. I love that. Or they're doing some stuff because, like, you know, I always talk about that, dude. I really do like four things. Yeah, I play FIFA. <laughs> I lift and do jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. I do the podcast uh -huh. and I hang out with the puppy. Nice, dude. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's my life. Uh -huh. And if if that's the rest of my life, I'd be like yeah, a pig in shit. Man, dude, I love it, nice. man. Yeah. I love it. That's sick. Uh, I want to I want to talk a little bit about the pay per view this weekend, man. Let's do it. Um, Three oh nine. Let's start with the main event. We got John Jones and Stipe. How do you think this fight plays out? I think I'm a I'm a not notorious, but I'm a decently known uh, John Jones hater. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> not because of the skill set. Skill set wise, I think he's probably he's he's got to be one. Of, he's the greatest of all time. I think, I think he's great. I think, uh, uh, the image he tries to sell is fake. So it bugs me a little bit. You know what I mean? So like, I gotcha. can't help, but try to put my MMA brain on the other guys and then try to figure out a way for them to win. And I'm like, yep, they can do it. So I always end up picking against him. I'm always wrong. It's been rough for you. I want to get that out. There. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, uh, uh, that's strictly like a, uh, I guess the opposite of a bias. I have a bias for hating on John, I guess. Yeah. So that's so I always go the other way. Uh, and I'm a giant Steve Bay fan. I know he's 42. I know he's probably slow. I know he hasn't fought in the, forever. I really hope he can pull it off. I think it's going to be John Jones. Yeah. Yeah, he's a sizable favorite. He's like minus 800. So for those that don't know, you put $800, you won 100. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, it's it's a fascinating fight, right? Because, like, I just have this gut feeling, and I know he's he's kind of hinted at it, but I think if John Jones wins and, you know, the, the betting odds say that he's going to, and I think he's going to also, yeah. I think he could beat him in any way. Yeah. I think he retires. I think it's likely. I think it's poetic, right? He's, yeah. he's from Rochester. Mm. He's from New York. It's an MSG. I'm getting the same feelings I did when Mazadol fought Gilbert Burns in Miami. I remember mm. saying on the show, I'm like, yo, it's poetic, right? This dude was on the Kimbo Slice fucking backyard yeah, yeah. brawls. Now he's the co-main, I believe he was, on the pay-per-view in Miami. It was the first one in, like, 20 years. It's poetic for him to put the yeah, gloves yeah. down, you know? And I thought win or lose, he would do it. And I kind of feel the same way with John Jones because, like, he don't want to go 
at, he don't want to fight these guys coming up now, like the Aspinalls of the no, world. Like everyone is talking no, about Aspinall. I think, and I, I think that guy is fucking dude. I think Aspinall fish. beats him. Yeah, at hundred hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say John Jones ducking that either though. No, no, I don't think so. I just think yeah, he's like think yo. He at this point, I think the only fight that he would take would probably be Pereira. Yeah, yeah, money, bro. That's a that's a, jo- sure. that's a huge fight. Yeah, that's a huge. Fight. Yeah, I think that's the biggest fight the UFC could put on right now. Hundred yeah, percent. So I feel as if it's John Jones. Um, Man, I don't even know how I'm going to bet this fight, honestly, just because, like, the numbers are just not, they're not ideal, right? Like, he's a two to one, uh, plus 200 to win by submission, plus 250 to win by knockout. Looking at the decision, plus 800, I think that's interesting. Wow. If you can't, you know, just Mm. a five. He he hasn't, yeah, if you really think about it, bro, like. Mm, Interesting. In four years, he's fought, what, three minutes? (laughs) Cause Yeah. It's not a lot he took care of, yeah, of yeah. gone so and now he's at heavyweight and yeah. i went over to barry's steakhouse shout out to yasim always hooks it up when i go over there and like john jones came in and i saw the place he had on his it's like it must be nice to be a heavyweight because yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. you're not really worried uh, about cutting uh, yeah it's an interesting fight man and and again it's going to be at msg those cards are always bangers what's the let me ask you this when you're watching fights when it's people in your weight class 135 mm. are you like are you watching it from uh I should be studying this also cuz I might run into him or do you do that when the time comes and they're like yo you're fighting so and so? I do a little bit of a little bit of both. Okay. Um I I make little mental notes while I'm watching, especially the 35ers. Like uh I make mental notes in general cuz I'm trying to learn from every single sure. thing I'm watching. So like I watch the entire fight card beginning to end. Uh I'm like, oh, okay, they could do this here. They could do this here. They should have did this here. I would have liked to see that here. Like I'm, every fight, n- not even just Bantamweight. But once it's Bantamweight, like especially, was this last week and maybe the week before? There were like four Bantamweight fights on the card. Yeah. And uh, timeline-wise, I think uh, I could be fighting any one of those guys, whether they win or lose. So that whole card, uh, I missed a couple fights. I had to go back and watch them. But uh, the whole card, I was taking notes on these guys. I'm like, okay. Uh, this guy likes his volume here. He's kind of a pressure guy here. He likes to attack on the angles here. Okay, okay. I'm just like making all these little mental notes. Uh, I don't take physical notes, and sometimes I do when I get the fight. You know what I mean? Until then, it's mental notes. And then now, when I go back and study, I, I already have my list of notes, and it's like, ah, that's right, that's right, that's. It's right. not the first time that yeah, you're seeing yeah, this. Yeah. So okay. I, I'm I'm big on the like the like mental notes. Yeah, I kind of do the same thing when I'm taking notes when I'm watching football or basketball or any sport that I'm going to talk about. Mm-hmm. First, it's the eye test because I feel like that's the best test. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you watching? Does yeah. it make sense? Right. And then from there, I'll go back and I'll look at the analytics. Like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, this this running back was better today. Right. He did rush for more. And as I'm watching the game, I remember one time way back, the Packers had these two running backs like six, seven years ago. I would just be like, yo, I don't know what the analytics are, but whenever this guy is in, the team plays better than when this guy's in. Oh, and then I looked into the analytics and it was backing what I was saying. You know, having oh, not looked at it, it was yeah, just yeah. the eye test, right? Mm. So I always find that interesting with fighters too. Cause like, is there, is there film study? Like, is there, there's different levels to it, dude. Like, uh, uh, Cody Steele. Okay. Cody Steele yeah. f- film studies. Like he, he goes hard for it. I don't know if he, I don't know if he physically takes notes, but, uh, um, he lives with me. That's why I know. So like, oh, okay. uh, um, he goes hard for his studying though. Like he's breaking things down. We're talking about things all the time. Um, especially when he's got a fight coming up for me, like when I got a fight coming up, I'll watch like two, maybe three times. And I probably won't even watch the full fight or any of the fights. Like I'll watch it. I get a feel for like how they operate range wise. And then, like I said, like, okay, yeah. Oh, that's right. They do do that. Okay. That sounds right. Okay. That's enough. And then, mm. cause if, if I, if I let myself, I, I'm up all night. Like I, I go to, I go down the rabbit hole and like, and, and I'm, and I've built my entire, I built an entire, entire universe on like how the fight could go, all the different potential outcomes, how it's going to tie it. Yeah. I'm like, it's too much. So now you're overthinking. Yeah. Now I'm overthinking it. Sure. Yeah. Basically is what I was trying to say. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. I overthought that answer. And then, yeah. uh, yeah. So I try to just get uh, like a little flavor and then, and then let my mental notes kind of go, go to work. Does that make sense? Nah, totally, bro. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Cody, but also fuck Cody, bro. Because he fucking, yeah. I was ranting about this. He put me in a submission where it looked like I was getting arrested. Yeah, yeah. 
And then, like, I couldn't even move. And the whole time, he's trying to, like, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, yo, bro, just do it already, bro. Like, where, where am I going, bro? Why you got to prolong this? You fucking black belt. Yeah, yeah, it's always yeah, got to yeah. be extra. Just like, I'm done. He's I'm a done. dog, bro. He's so good. Nah, yo, he's nasty. And, you know, shout out to him, man. You know, he just, uh, he fought on contender, got a second round finish, mm-hmm. got a contract to the UFC. Um, it's dope, man. There's some good vibes at the gym, bro. bro and I, I feel like you kind of right started now. that, too, dude. Stop it. Nah, Everybody's real, like, been saying that yo, lately. I don't know why. Over the summer, dude. Over the summer. Mm. It's like you know you you had the um, what was it the UFL mm-hmm. right that was so, at the, that was August thirtieth yeah. right you had that and then that went into Marab mm. then you had oh yeah that was the Syndicate Gold Rush yeah really you had yeah, you had yeah. Cody you had Roundtree who lost the yeah. main event but, but like his stock went fucking through the skyrocketed, roof yeah. which is so dope about fighting bro because I don't think there's many honestly I don't think there's any sport the only other time off the top of my head right now I can remember is. When the Eagles played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, the Eagles lost, but everyone was like, yo, Jalen Hurts, the Eagles quarterback, like, he fucking balled out, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. even though they lost, like, his stock went through. Dude, outside of that, yeah, it's, it's yeah. the only time in team sports where I could vividly remember that. But in fighting, and especially in the UFC, if you go into a fight and, like, the expectations are low, like, everyone was expecting him to yeah, get yeah, smoked, yeah. even the mm-hmm. biggest odds. And then for him to show out was up two, yeah. 2-0, yeah. Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Going into round three. And then he gets caught in round four, and everyone was just like, he's a fucking Damn, gangster, yeah, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, dude, I, I think you should definitely give yourself some credit for the, yeah. the syndicate goal okay. rush. Oh, yeah, sick. I'm, yeah. I'm with it. I'll take that. I'll take yeah. that. It was a, uh, bro, we got a dope team. And, and, like, the squad on the fight team right now is, I think, probably better than ever. Even, even like, we got a few guys in there that don't fight, but they train. Those guys are savages. Yeah, syndicates, it, in my eyes, that's like, uh, it's got to be like gym of the year. If, if Wood don't get coach of the year, he's going to be pissed. He, when you were saying earlier about um, uh, you giving somebody advice and then them hearing it from somebody else and then all, preaching it to you like it's the first time they've heard it, that happens to Wood all the time. I do it to him on purpose because I know he hates it. And uh, he's always voicing it. He goes, oh, if only you would have heard that somewhere before that. Mm. Yeah, so Wood knows exactly what you're talking about, too. Uh, dude, it was yeah. funny, man, because uh, I think I was you were there, too, when we were in the in the weight room, and I was telling you about, like, yo, one thing I like doing is you hire an intern. Mm-hmm. They could do all your content right, for right, you. Right. You're a UFC fighter. They could get credited for college. Like, my, my buddy Dom now, shout out to Dom. Every, I, I shout him out almost every episode because six years ago, he started cl- making all the clips for my show and editing my videos. He was in college at the time, got credited, spoke to his dean, I spoke to their dean, so think about that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he runs production for the New York Giants. How sick. Dude. So, like, get an intern, help yeah, you with yeah, the content. You gotta do that. And I remember, telling, yeah. I remember telling Wood, I'm like, yo, do you feel salty that you've never gotten, like, a Coach of the Year nominee? He's like, yeah, I kind of do. I was like, you know, you just started doing media. He's like, yeah. I was like, there's your answer, bro. Yeah, you know yeah, who yeah. votes on these awards? The yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And he was uh-huh. like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was like, bro, on, bro. I told him the same thing months ago. Yeah. Oh, he does the same thing to me. That's yeah. Okay. Shout out to Wood, yeah, man. Yeah, Shout yeah, out to Wood. And ho- hopefully he's feeling better, too, because I know he just had a, a surgery. All right, yeah. let's go back to the pay-per-view. I know we got a yeah. little sidetrack, a little controlled chaos. Um, Chandler versus Charles. Oh. Banger of a fight. Um. Is it dumb for Chandler to take this fight after he's been waiting so long for Connor? Uh, I respect him more for taking it than rather than waiting. Like we're fighters, fighters fight. Yeah. So I, I I know we all want the big payday, and but it doesn't seem like Connor's got any real plans to come back. I, I think his social media says otherwise, but his actions say another thing. So I go by his actions. So I love I love this fight. Um, one thing to make note of, uh, this card they're going back to the old gloves. Whoa, that's yeah, true. Just, yes, yeah. mm-hmm. I think they just announced yesterday or today or something. Yeah, uh, going back to the old gloves. So that's that's a big deal. I was just complaining about those. I was like, bro, we need, just need to bring the, the old ones back. Um, so what's the difference? I don't know. If it, it's something, something feels different in them, and uh, I don't know if the padding has more maybe absorption, so the force doesn't transfer, and that's why like the knockout rates of like they've gone down by like thirty percent or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I was looking it up. Uh, I know they don't feel very comfortable. I didn't. I didn't like the way they felt. Anyways, um, I guess a for effort. I thought style wise they looked good. They didn't feel good, and the the finish rates of knockouts just is went way down. So I'm thinking something in the, the fabric or foam that they use just absorbs uh, force instead of transfers. Mm. That's that's what we're looking for. We're looking to transfer force from here to their jaw, and then lights go out. So 
Damn, bro. Yeah, because I always hear about the gloves. So yeah. it's interesting to hear, so, especially you, because you got the the old glove experience yeah, yeah. and then the new yeah, one the new too. Ones now, yeah. So damn, and that's with that being said, uh, I think Chandler gets the finish this time. Whoa, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Chandler is one of my favorite fighters. To actually, both of them, ironically enough, they're fighting each other. I love betting on both of their fights mm-hmm. because there's clear path to victories. Mm-hmm. Chandler round one. Mm-hmm. Chandler under one and a half rounds. He's very dominant, very explosive, very dangerous. Right. Even when he fought Charles the first time, he won round one, mm-hmm. then gets caught in, in round two. And then Charles, all his fights, I think like 13 of the last 14 have been finished. Yeah. He's with dog, the exception yeah. of one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this one's crazy. I mean, the line is nuts. Like Charles is almost a three to one favorite. Is I don't he know really? how I feel uh, just about because that. Because he, already, cause he yeah. already won. Probably more active too. Yeah. Chandler that makes not me want to throw money on. I can't bet. I'm not yeah, gonna. Yeah. Oh, I, I could though. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Makes me think you should. Yeah. Throw some money on Chandler for that. Interesting. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I think. Uh, uh, I don't know. Olvera's just taking. He's one of my favorite fighters too. Right. Um, I I watched his UFC debut. I was still I was a fan way back then. I'm all that fucking kid's good. And then he's only gotten better since then. Uh, he's yeah. a dog. I think he deals with adversity better than most. But how many times do you have to go through adversity before adversity gets you? And and think we're starting to see some little chips in some of that um with the islam fight is is kind of the one i'm talking about but i don't know i just uh i feel bad that that he's gotten hurt so many damn times and one of these times he's got to be going out and getting it over in it and if anybody can do that that's chandler yeah you know one of the minds that i always i always would talk about this and and again someone that's never gotten into a fight uh at any level um you know, it's a big pet peeve of mine, bro. Mm-hmm. When I hear people break down fighters and they go, like, their top attribute is toughness. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but he's so tough. He's yeah, yeah, he's yeah. tough. Uh-huh. He has an iron chin. I'm like, I need I need some more, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me that they got elite cardio and they never gas. Tell me that they're a, a A plus wrestler or their jujitsu is amazing. Like, I feel like toughness is, duh. Yeah, yeah. We're all tough, dude. Right. Like. Yeah, I isn't don't that know. the case? Like, am I wrong? For the then? most part, like, like some of us that toughness, we're tough until we're not. Know what I mean? Like, sure. Like, a uh, the armor's solid until it's broken. Right, so, right, right. It's like fatigue makes a coward out of all of us too. So you have heard that expression. And, and a lot of people don't know what fatigue feels like. That's another reason they should go train. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Sometimes it depends on who I'm hearing it from. Like I'm like when like like you said when it's somebody who doesn't train it or doesn't really know and they say oh but he's tough I'm like yeah but okay hold on dude don't talk to me right now like, right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, but when it's like a uh dang i think i was just talking with i think marab me and marab were over in saudi for a couple weeks and i can't remember what fight we were talking about we're like dude he's just so damn tough i can't remember who it was i'd have to go back and look at the card but we were talking about just uh i think it was whitaker being tough mm. actually and then and then he got still got tapped quick so like even us fighters that when we highlight toughness, it's still, right. it can be irrelevant. Got right, right, right. Ju- his teeth caved in. So yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I get, I get what you're saying though. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always a weird debate that I have with people mm-hmm. sometimes. It's always interesting. Is there another, um, is there another fight on the card you're, you're interested in or keeping your eye on? Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the card, dude. Um, what do you think of Bo Nickel? Uh, I think Bo, Bo Nickel's dope. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to believe everything he says just because the way he says it there's so much confidence and he's so sure of himself and i really respect that um and i don't know i like like i just feel like he, yeah i know you got a lot of wrestling experience this is this is fighting this is a little different like uh your toughness is a little bit different in mma mm-hmm. compared to wrestling like i like i don't know but maybe he knows like i don't know every time we see one of these superstar guys it's like what do they know that we don't know know what i mean so yeah I know. I I like watching him fight. I'll continue to watch him fight. I love his story. I think he's got I think he's got some good style. Like he's he's exciting. He's fun to watch. Tune in. Yeah, fighting mm-hmm. Paul Craig definitely yeah. the biggest test. He could uh, knock him out. He's still a yeah. He's still a sizable favorite. It's yeah. the shortest favorite he's been in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Biggest test. Yeah, by, by a, a big amount. Yeah, for sure. As far sure. as like somebody with tenure and stuff, but Paul Craig's just such a damn walking target that dude. I think Bo Nickel. He's a re- but most wrestlers can throw a mean overhand. Mm. Bull nickel might hook him with a big overhand and put him down, put him out. I like that. Because I was looking at knockout too. Yeah. I was looking at knockout for Bull Nickel. That's where I'm 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 leaning there when I look at the I don't bet. Yeah. But yeah. when when I look at like uh, right, the right, lines right. and stuff. 
Yeah, man. I'm excited for this card, bro. I'm excited for this card. Do you have any, uh, how last question this is a more personal question for you. Um, I'm always fascinated by fighters taking short notice fights. Your last UFC fight in France, you got like two weeks notice. Yeah. 10 days. Is there hesitation or is it just like, I'm back in the dance. Fuck. I'm jumping off the, off the plane. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, that's what I was waiting for. Um, for me, I still felt super prepared, and I wish I could have done better. I, I didn't, unfortunately. But, uh, um, yeah, 10 times out of 10, if I get that same scenario is the same, even if it's a little worse off, if I'm, like, more banged up from the previous fight, I'm still doing it. Like, no, zero hesitation. Which, to get in the show is one thing. Um, my manager and, and Coach Wood have been talking to me about this a little bit. My, like, five of my losses in the UFC, four, four – Four of my losses in the UFC, rather, uh, all short notice. Every time I've, I've taken short, and my, my, I don't know if it's my ego. Um, I'm trying to do a little self-reflection and find out because uh, I, frankly, I just want to fight. I don't know how long I can, I can do it for, and I want to, every chance I get, I want to get in there. So I don't know if that's my ego speaking that or if, like, that's just some spirit where, like, bro, we don't have much longer go. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Um, Damn, dude, I didn't know that, man. Yeah, yeah. So 16 um, and 8. As a pro. 16, 8 and a pro, 3 and 6 in the UFC, which, like, seems... I'm the toughest guy with the worst record in the UFC. Like, uh, I was l looking at it, and, uh, like, I've, I just fought... I fought nothing but, like, some of the best guys. For sure, there. yeah. Um, I short noticed against Song Yidong, who was doing his thing. Um, he beat me in decision. I uh, beat Eamon Zahabi. I lost a short notice to Benito Lopez. I lost a short notice to Chris Gutierrez. Um, I beat Smolka. I beat... Draco Rodriguez lost to Martinez, and then Miles Johns was like short notice esque for him. That was weird. Anyways, uh, and then I lost this last fight short notice. So like four of those fights are, are short notice ones, and maybe that's not my forte. As much as I want it to be, as much as I I'm down for it, um, we're trying to really pull the reins back a little bit on my yeah, bro, my excitement to get in there yeah. and get a full camp. Yeah, you definitely have to, bro. Cause yeah, yeah. that's you just fucking like to fight. Nah, so much, totally, dude. man. But also, like you know, you gotta you gotta it's protect yourself and and yourself as an asset. Yeah, right. Yeah. Cause you always you I always got, I gotta look this. at it like that too. So, yeah, and right. it's not that it happened once where you could be like, ah, it was an anomaly. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, no, this no. has happened yeah, a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's not the best route for you. Yeah. So I get it, bro. Cause like mm -hmm. there there's sometimes like on a different scale where like I'll get thrown money from a sponsor. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, damn, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but yeah. then it's like, do I want the audience to get behind this product? Because yeah. I'm not really behind it. The money's right. great, but it's like I built this relationship with the fan base because they know if I endorse something or if I have someone on the show, it's legit. Because I can't tell you how many people have wanted to come on the show, especially right. being in here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'll pass. Yeah, I get that. How come? No, it just I don't agree with what you do like in yeah, the good, sports good betting life. space. Mm -hmm. I don't like people that sell picks. Right. Like I have a Patreon. It's $5. You're supporting the show. It's a bigger thing. You're not paying for the picks. It's complete. Like there's some people that charge like a thousand dollars for their NFL picks, and I'm like, yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's a lot of money when the average better in this country is like a twenty dollar better. Yeah, right. So like, if you were to bet on my picks and you pay me five dollars a month, and I have a shitty week, mm -hmm. you're not gonna want to swing on me. No, nah, no. Nah. If I charge you a thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. you want results yeah, and if i have a shitty week not, not only have point. i paid you a thousand then i probably bet a thousand now i'm down 2k yeah yeah i'm i'm pulling up on you yeah yeah right? yeah, so yeah 100 i've i've been very cautious and you know there, there's been people that i've had on the show and then like the fallout after has been like damn bro i, I regret not having them on the show and mm -hmm. i've wanted to pull episodes but i can't because i've had contractual obligations mm -hmm. to sponsors to not have it on there um, that's only happened like two, three times of the 900 shows that I've done, but still it's something that when it is that small of a number, you remember it right, more. Right. So I try to take pride in like the people that I do have on the show, I have a connection with, mm. or it's something that they do that I'm interested in and I believe in. Right, so right. that's why I'm glad that you for keeping the quality of your product high and above all else dude. because, uh, I think providers, especially dude, sometimes we look at like, a like a potential sponsor money or a fight that maybe we shouldn't be looking at or whatever. And we see the line and we're like, yeah, okay, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And now it's no longer pure. The results get a little skewed and here we are. Nah, totally, man. Yeah. And like, I, uh, I take pride in honestly saying I've never scammed anyone. Yeah. 
I've never faked the funk. I've never tried to uh, manipulate anyone in, in any facet. I kind of just do me. Mm-hmm. I try to mind my business as best I can. Yeah, good on and you. And I, I like having fun. Yeah, and I appreciate cool. having you on the show, bro. Let the people yeah, know yeah. Uh, where they can find you. Yeah, bro. So the best place to find me, um, all my socials, at Vendetta135, um, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, not Twitter, X, whatever. Uh, YouTube at Vendetta135. I got, I got, I do like vlogs and stuff of, uh, I think I had live a pretty unique life. So I've been trying to document all my stuff so I can kind of share my perspective on things. Um, so I got all that on my YouTube as well. Um, I think that's a, yeah, at Vendetta135, pretty much everywhere. Um, easiest to hit me up on Instagram if you need something though. But I'm going to have all that in the social media description below in the episode. Thank you all for listening. Shout out to Vince. Shout out to the VM initials. Let's go, shout bro. out to all of you bastards out there. We'll see y'all next time. Cheers. In his element, I'm a gold medalist. Bronze like your medalist. So many deer in headlights, but it's bedtime. Hear that supper bell, main course, beat a venison. Zab. Most dangerous game. Either kill or be killed.